Hello everyone, welcome back to My Hero Academia Pontifex. This will be the continuation of Hidden Messages. This will be Part 2, Chapter 2, entitled Grades. The class had gone about as well as Aizawa had expected, to be honest. Only the most studious students seemed to have any idea what the lecture was about. The rest of the class was far too engrossed in their assignment. He thumbed through the papers quickly before heading to his desk in the teacher's lounge, sighing at how most of the quizzes were left mostly blank. On his way to his desk, he stopped to grab a cup of coffee. With classes all done for the day, he has all afternoon to grade. The first thing he did once he got settled in for grading was make a list about what he noticed. He had learned the hard way that if he doesn't keep track of what he figured out during the lesson before he grades, he'll retroactively figure out messages and grade according to it. The first time he did the assignment, just about every student failed, even if they shouldn't have. Of course, once he realized it, he went back and regraded everyone, but... Even then, their grades were probably a bit lower than they should have been, and it was a lot of extra work for him. Aizawa went through his class one by one and wrote everything that he saw. For some students, he knew the message in its entirety, like Yayorozu, whose message he had intercepted from Ashido. For other students, he figured out parts or a general idea of their messages. Many of the students relied on gesturing, which was admittedly not a bad way to get their message across, but it was really obvious still. He was disappointed in a few students who he thought should have done better. Shoji and Jiro didn't even attempt any sort of nonverbal communication. They just whispered their messages to each other. While it made sense that they would use their advanced hearing and neither have the ability to whisper quiet enough, though, that no one else heard them. Koda and Shinso were also a bit disappointing. They just used normal sign language. That might have worked if they were the only two people in the room that knew the language, but they aren't. There were a few students that did really well. Todoroki and Ida used Morse code to get their messages across. Aizawa didn't even notice until Ida was halfway through a message, and he accidentally tapped on the desk a bit too hard. After the sound had clued him into listening, he got the rest of the message in Todoroki's, but for the first time doing this assignment, it was impressive. Aizawa didn't know what to think about Bakugo and Midoriya. The only thing they did that was different from how they normally act was when Midoriya got up and got a tissue, and he watched both of them like a hawk during that whole thing. Neither made any sort of move to communicate throughout the whole lesson. Either they somehow did the best in the class, or they did the worst. Honestly, Aizawa was betting that it was the worst. This seemed like the type of assignment that Bakugo would deem unworthy of his time. It was a bit strange that they had paired up. But it was most likely Bakugo's idea. He figured Midoriya would be the easiest to bully into not doing the assignment. Midoriya probably agreed in an attempt to try to get along. Aizawa could only hope that they would choose better next time and fix their grades. He also made another mental note to look into Bakugo's behavior. Aizawa had thought that his treatment of Midoriya was concerning from the beginning of the school year, and he made a mental note to look into it many times over the course of the school year as well. However, other things just kept distracting him. As soon as he was satisfied with his list of the observations that he had, he got started on the quizzes, Nothing really stood out much as he was grading. Ida and Todoroki did well at understanding each other's messages, but they focused on the class instead of trying to figure out the others. Many students never got their message across to their partner fully, but they were able to figure out a few other student messages, even if other students figured out their message as well. Overall, it was pretty much exactly how he was expecting, until he got to Bakugos. Aizawa had gone through the class in order by pairs. This left the problem duo last, he wasn't surprised that not a single other student had figured out either of the duo's messages. After all, he was pretty sure that they hadn't done the assignment. Bakugo got a perfect score on the front of the quiz, which wasn't unexpected, but when he flipped the page over, he was not expecting the sheer amount of information. Shocked, he grabbed Midoriya's paper, the one he was going to grade next, and flipped it over. When he saw the nearly identical page, he couldn't stop his head from hitting the desk. With a groan, he picked his head up and decided to put off the oncoming headache by grading the front of Midoriya's quiz instead of the back. Once he could put it off no longer, he started reading. The more he read, the more his head started to hurt. The back of Midoriya's and Bakugo's papers were identical, every word the same. This is not even mentioning the message Midoriya came up with. His prompt to observe someone in the room and figure something out about them had somehow led to him figuring out a secret that they had been keeping for years. Not even all the teachers knew that he was married. Ignoring the content of the message for a minute, Aizawa tried to figure out how to grade them. Up until this point, grading had been fairly simple, getting all the questions on the quiz correct, as well as getting writing down their partner's message as well, and then writing down their message would be a perfect hundred points. From there, up to five points would be taken away for each person that figured out their message, including if Aizawa figured out the message. 
every message that they figure out would add up to five points to their total. The exact number of points added or taken away would depend on how much information was figured out. Knowing the message word for word would be five points, while knowing a general idea would earn less. In addition to that, each student was given up to five extra points based on how complicated their message was. The bare minimum message would not award them any extra points, while the complicated message would earn five points. So far, the highest grades in the class were 100 and 101. Todoroki and Ida would have gotten a bit higher if Aizawa hadn't noticed the Morse code. Their score was already very high. The class average is usually in the low 50s. If he was to follow the same grading scheme, Bakugo and Midoriya would each have 165 points. Usually people only start getting over 100 after the third or fourth version of this assignment, and no one has ever gotten close to 165. Unsure what to do, Aizawa turned to Vlad King, who was grading his class's assignment at his desk across the room. Vlad, if you have a couple of outliers in your class, would you use the same grading scheme or would you change it? I would keep it the same. It would be unfair to grade any students differently than the others. Besides, we always set the negative to zero before adding the difficulty score, so they can't be too low. I doubt this is the first time you have a student get a zero in the first time around. Make sure you keep all the scores in the average, though. It would be nice for Class B to win. Why do you assume they did poorly? It's the first time we're doing this assignment. There's no way anyone did well enough for you to question how to grade them. Vlad King turned back to his grading and Aizawa did the same. Deciding to just go with it, Aizawa marked 165 on both boys' papers and then moved on, leaving a note to himself to talk to them about Midoriya's message. He didn't want that information getting out. He also didn't want to think about how wrong he'd been. Instead of pondering about how they managed to do it, Aizawa finished entering the numbers into his spreadsheet, finalizing the students' scores and figuring out the class average. Slowly, the room started to fill with excited teachers. They knew that Vlad and Aizawa would be finishing up grading soon, and once they were done, it would be time to figure out who won the bets. All the teachers except the two homeroom teachers were invested, even Nezu, although no one dared to put money on a bet against him. As Aizawa finished, he hid the bottom half of his face in his scarf so no one would see his proud smile. This was easily the highest class average he'd ever had, on the first iteration of this assignment. Of course, the class average without Bakugo and Midoriya was closer than normal, but still respectable. However, including them brought the average up quite a bit. It took a bit for Vlad King to finish as well, but once they were both done, all the teachers had gathered in the meeting room to hear the results. Nezu immediately made his way to the top of the table and began speaking. Before we go over the results, why don't we take the bets again? For the highest overall average, we have All Might, Present Mike, and I betting that Class A will do better. Everyone else is betting on Class B. For highest scoring pair, Midnight, 13, and I bet that it would be Tokage and Kendo. Snipe bet that it would be Kiroro and Suraba. Ectoplasm and Cementos bet on Ida and Todoroki. Lunch Rush and Recovery Girl had bet on Koda and Shinso. Present Mike bet on Shoji and Jiro. Power Loader bet on Kodai and Yanagi and All Might bet on Bakugo and Midoriya. Wait, All Might, you bet on the problem duo. You understand what the assignment was, right? Midnight interrupted. I will admit I'm not as familiar with the assignment as the rest of you, but I believe I understand it well enough. They are childhood friends, and recently I noticed that they are very aware of each other at all times. I think they probably did well. But it requires them actually working together. Snipe spoke up this time. Even with his limited interactions with the class, he knew that the problem duo were like oil and water. Nezu cleared his throat and continued. For the highest scoring individual student, Midnight, Thirteen, and I voted on Tokage, Snipe, and Ectoplasm bet on Kuroro, and Cementos bet on Todoroki. Lunch Rush and Recovery Girl bet on Koda, Present Mike bet on Jiro, Power Loader bet on Yanagi, and All Might bet on Midoriya. Nezu clapped his paws together. Now, let's hear the results. Vlad King, Aizawa, what are the class averages? Class B got a solid 55.2% this year. Vlad King spoke up with a smug smile on his face. That is pretty good, but that's nothing compared to the 62.5% that my class got. Aizawa couldn't help the smug smile off his face and nor the pride out of his voice. What? But, Vlad King sputtered as the other teachers looked around in shock. Only present Mike All Might and Nezu looked at all happy, after they had won the bet, at least the first one. Yes, without the two outliers in the class, the average would have been 51.1%, but you insisted I leave them in, Aizawa deadpanned. Two students brought your class average up from 51.1% to 62.5? Are you sure you did the math right? Ectoplasm asked. Yes, I'm sure. I was actually surprised that they didn't bring it up 
any more than that. Well then, let's move on to the highest pair. Vlad King, what was the highest scoring pair in your class? Why even bother? They obviously aren't higher than Aizawa's. Vlad King sighed and then continued. The highest scoring pair in Class B was Tokage and Kendo, with an average score of 101. Aizawa. If it makes you feel better, Vlad, the second highest scoring pair in the class had an average of 100.5, so if it wasn't for the outliers, you would have had all the winners, but the highest scoring pair in Class A was Bakugo and Midoriya, with a score of 165. The room exploded with noise as the teachers exclaimed in surprise. The problem duo? You're kidding, right? 165, there's no way anyone scored that high. Aizawa, are you sure you graded them properly? That's their average score, right? Not their combined score? Like a true teacher, Nezu sat patiently and waited for everyone to calm down. Once they did, he spoke. Before we have Aizawa explain how their score got that high, let's settle the last bet. Aizawa, who was the highest scorer? Bakugo and Midoriya both got the same score of 165. They both turned in practically identical papers, and they both had completed messages as well. What do you mean by practically identical? Nezu was curious about this unexpected revelation. Aizawa pulled out their quizzes and handed them to him. I mean, the only difference between them is that they had to write their message first and they had different prompts. Otherwise, they're word for word the same. Oh? Nezu looked over the papers. Oh? Did anyone figure out their messages? No, Aizawa groaned. I couldn't even tell that they were communicating at all. In my notes, I even wrote that it was more likely they decided to not do the assignment, rather than that they were actually communicating. Do you mind if I were to share this with everyone? I am hoping that we can go over the video feed and see how they were able to communicate this. Aizawa knew why the principal was asking. If he agreed for them to go over the videos, they might find out how they were communicating, but they definitely would also find out about Midoriya's message. Nezu was asking if Aizawa was okay with all the teachers knowing that he and Mike were married. Aizawa thought about it for a moment, but he realized that he really didn't mind the teachers knowing. He knew that present Mike wouldn't care that everyone knew. In fact, he knew that Mike would prefer if they told everyone. Either way, though, he should confirm it with his husband first. Aizawa slid a paper over to Mike and pointed at Midoriya's message. You okay with this getting out? Mike read it over for a moment, confused, then he looked up at Aizawa. Yes! Aizawa had to use his quirk to quiet his overenthusiastic husband. Sorry, yes, I'm okay with that. Are you? I want to figure out how the problem children manage to do this well. And I don't mind everyone here knowing. Aizawa spoke quietly, trying to keep their conversation private, but he was well aware that they had an audience the entire time. Mike's resulting smile was blinding, but Aizawa couldn't help but smile in return. I don't mind sharing it. Let's figure this out, Aizawa said as he turned to Nezu. With a grin, Nezu pulled up the video feed, as well as a photo of Midoriya's quiz, onto the giant screen on the wall. As he rewound the video to the class time that it was, the teachers read the paper. You're married? Ectoplasm spoke up. Yes, we've been married for seven years, Aizawa answered. Midoriya managed to figure it out already. Damn it, don't tell Tensei. I was betting that none of them would figure it out until at least their second year, if they figured it out at all. Present Mike chuckled at midnight's edition. Before any of the conversations could continue, Nezu cleared his throat to get their attention. He had gotten the video feed to show the lesson. They watched in silence for a while until they saw Midoriya scribble something down in a separate notebook, then what he had been using to take notes. Nezu zoomed in on the writing, only to see a series of indecipherable symbols. What language is that? All Might asked. I don't think it is one. I think it's some sort of code, Nezu answered as he zoomed back out. As the class continued, the teachers watched as Jiro whispered her message. Moments later, Midoriya wrote something in his coded notebook. The class went on, and they couldn't see anything that would explain how they were communicating, but they did see Midoriya write something down in his notebook every few minutes, usually after a student had tried to tell their partner a message. However, he would not have been able to see some of them, but Bakugo could. Finally, they watched as Aizawa handed out the quizzes at the end of class. Bakugo and Midoriya sped through the front easily only pausing finally when they reached the back and needed to write Midoriya's message. To everyone's surprise, he looked around almost frantically before his eyes landed on Aizawa, who was reaching towards his neck. Suddenly, at the exact same time, both boys started writing. After the boys finished writing Midoriya's message, Midoriya pulled his encoded notes in front of him, occasionally glancing at his notes, and Midoriya started writing out each message. Incredibly, Bakugo was writing the exact same thing at the exact same time. 
It was almost as if Midoriya was translating his notes and dictating them as he wrote them so that Bakugo could copy them, even if it was dead silent. The teachers didn't look away, even as the class ended. Finally, it was Nezu that broke the silence. All Might, did you know they could do that? I had no idea. I thought they could do well, not that they could read each other's minds. Wait, are we sure that neither of them have a telepathy quirk? Present Mike spoke up. All Might froze for a second before Nezu spoke. That wouldn't make any sense. Bakugo has explosion and Midoriya has a superpower. If they had gotten this far in their time into UA without making something as useful as telepathy known, it would be very concerning. I will admit that Midoriya's quirk was very underdeveloped when he started here, and he might still be finding new facets to it, but telepathy seems very unlikely. It would be concerning, but it would make what we just watched make sense. Even so, I don't think that's the case. Both of them are too driven to be the best heroes. They wouldn't hide something like that if it would be so obviously useful. Aizawa spoke with a sense of finality. Well, Nezu clapped his hands. I doubt we'll gain any more knowledge from this. Hopefully, the next iteration of the assignment will lead to some insight into what's happening here. All right, everyone, this concludes Chapter 2 of Hidden Messages. Chapter 3 will be next, and as always, thank you all so much for listening.